Blazely Dragon here, and today's video is going to be talking about, what's the best way to word it? I would say talking about common sense. The thing is, when you talk about religion or spirituality or even life, it doesn't matter if you're talking about science or hobbies or talents or things that you enjoy doing. All of it is made up. All of it even religion. I've been seeing a lot of posts lately that have been talking about different faiths and talking about how they're not made up. Sorry, hitting buttons on my phone. <laughs> so anyway, they talk about how the religions are not made up. Well, how are they not? Where do they come from? They are made up by someone. Now, granted, the raw material whether, you know, once again, you're talking about science or religion or anything, the raw material is already there. So it has someone to discover it. So I guess technically everything is discovered in a way. But when you talk about religion and spirituality, you're talking about stuff that is in interpretations. You know, you have the world, <coughs> and then you have different uh, words, names, titles, etc. that you use for something. This is just your way of interpreting the world. And that's, I guess that's kind of what religion is. I mean, if you really think about it, religion or spirituality, and I also say spirituality because some people don't like to consider themselves religious, they consider themselves spiritual. And then there are some people who are religious, but they're not spiritual at all. So they just go through the motions. So to do something religiously, uh, usually the phrase is used uh, for doing something regular, on a regular basis. So if, you know, I religiously shop or religiously watch that show. So... Yes, that's kind of dumbing down the word, and usually when you're talking about religiously, you're talking about a specific religion. Regardless, it's something that you do regularly. So that's just going through the motions. But to be spiritual in your religion brings it to another level. So it's all based upon interpretation, and as I've always said, perception. Perception colors everything. So, with that in mind, every religion in the world is made up. And already I'm sure that there are some people who are going to be watching this that are getting angered. Either way. When you take something, a concept, let's, uh, let's look at a couple of the major religions that a lot of people know about. So uh, let's talk about Christianity. And I know that's kind of broad, you know, Catholics, Protestants, Jewish... Uh, but let's just take Christianity in general. Actually, I guess Jewish wouldn't be considered Christian. Haha, <laughs> sorry. Caught me, didn't you? Uh, so, point being, if we were talking about some of the major religions, Christianity is kind of a very broad spectrum. There's a few different denominations that could fit into that. So, if you take Christianity, you have them, and they say that the Bible is the Word of God. And some will argue saying that the Word is different than the Bible. Regardless, you're talking about human concept words. If I say words like hate, love, anger, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Some of you might have similar things come to mind, but everyone is going to relate to their own experiences. Words are left to interpretation. Sometimes when you're reading something, you can't understand the meaning of that word unless you read the words around it. With that in mind, if you take any written word, it's not going to be perfect, universal. So if you're talking about something like the divine, whether you call it God, goddess, the divine, the great spirit, whatever the case may be, the universe, we are talking about something that is beyond comprehension. So to dumb it down into human words is taking away from that, in my opinion, and my views. So when you talk about something like the Bible... You're taking these words, words of man, and trying to say that they're divine. Well, in, in, a, in a sense, I can see that all, all of life and the world that we live in is divine. At the same time, comprehending the divine is, to me, a little bit deeper than slapping a word or two on it. That's why I have all these videos that talk forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And I go around in circles sometimes and repeat myself sometimes because there's no perfection. The only perfection is imperfection. In order to be perfect is to truly express yourself. And it's going to change, and it's going to differ. And as time goes on, you're going to get new comprehension of things. You know, you're going to learn new things. That, that's okay. So when you take this book and you say the Bible and it was given to us by God, first of all, how are you hearing God? He doesn't speak in words, does he? 
Does he inspire words within you? Potentially. I've heard that concept used before, too. So if the words were inspired by God, once again, they were inspired to you, so you interpreted it, this inspiration into your own words. Once again, you're making it up. You're getting influenced. You're getting inspired. I'm not going to argue that point. But I am going to say you were the one writing it down, thus making it your own, thus you making it up. So let's go to a little bit of a different aspect with that. Then you have, you know, it was originally written in one language, goes from language to language to language, and then you have all these different versions of the Bible. You know, you have King James's version, and you have this version, and you have that version. King James is just the one I hear about a lot. I don't know all the different versions of the Bible, but I do know that there are many versions, and there's different scriptures in and out of it, and it's written in different languages and interpreted. And I can tell you from trying to learn other languages, uh, such as Mandarin is one of the ones that I'm trying to study, uh, just through the martial arts and my love for Chinese culture and spirituality, is when you translate words over, they don't translate exactly. They don't. You can get a very similar concept. You know, uh, you can, you know, say, Nuhaizit, and know that that's referring to a little girl, but saying a little girl is a little bit different than saying Nuhaizit. And, you know, it's, it's, and things will relate, you know. Guoji is, uh, and I might, you know, I'm still learning to pronounce things properly, is usually referring to some sort of juice. So as an example, if I say orange juice, uh, so someone in China could say guoji. Well, yeah, but they could also say guoji for apple juice or, you know, cider. You know, that's the same thing. You know, apple juice and cider, you know, they're both from apples, but depending on how they're prepared. So you get a difference in translation based upon that region. So words lose meaning as you translate them. So that's that's one aspect, and that you know that's just you know Christianity. So uh, let's look at other aspects too. Let's look at Wicca. Wicca is a very popular one these days. Um, <clears throat> when you take Wicca, you know Wicca. Everyone's saying you know well it's not you know it's not made up. I'm hearing that a lot from a lot of people lately. How's it not made up? Where did the concept come from? Okay, when you're talking about the Christians, yeah, you're talking about this divine inspiration. So where's the origins of Wicca? Where did it start? It started with a man named Gerald Gardner. Now, a lot of people will be arguing, but, 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 you know, Wicca have, you know, it's based off of all these older principles and practices. That's, that's fine. Let me give you another example. Shaolin. Okay, the Shaolin were these groups of monks in China that were basically, I guess they consider themselves Chan Buddhists for the most part. They're mostly a Buddhist sect, even though... In China, they didn't give up all their folk religions. They didn't give up Taoism. They, they mixed and blended it in the Shaolin Temple. That was what's so great about these guys, is they mixed different philosophies and cultures and pulled them together, because it's made up. So you have principles in Shaolin that was brought to the temple by Bohid Rama, and I believe it was 540 CE. Uh, just for reference, those that are not familiar, CE is Common Era. BCE is Before Common Era. These are scientific terms. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, use uh, B.C., before Christ, and A.D., which, do you know what A.D. means? Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. Those are very Christian, and not being Christian myself, I, I, I use the scientific B.C.E. and C.E. Anyway, so 540 C.E. So the Shaolin are essentially 1,500 years old. Okay. But, at the same time, it's still a made-up religion because it was inspired by another one. They don't claim, the Shaolin don't sit here and say, oh, well, we're thousands and thousands of years old. Let me give you another example, Hinduism. Hinduism has records going back 4,000 years. As I, I, it might be further. I'm not an expert on Hinduism. I'm not an expert on any of this. This is just, you know, my research and things that I've learned and talked and discussed about. So, from what I understand, that there's there's pretty solid evidence for Hinduism records dating back 4,000 years. Well, you have this Hindu priest by the name of Bohit Rama, who the Shaolin call Dalmo. Well, Dalmo comes to the you know, Shaolin temple, and they're, they're, they're studying Buddhism. They learned about Buddhism, which, you know, Buddha is an enlightened one. It's a title. Uh, Siddhartha is like the first Buddha, which was way back before Dalmo's time. Dalmo, like I said, you know, in 540 CE, you know, he comes over here, hears of this Buddhist temple called the Shaolin, and he goes in there to, you know, talk to them and stuff like that, and he influences them and stuff. Well, the point is, 
they're taking all of these Hindu teachings and they're rewriting them. If you go to like any of these old images of Shaolin temples, there's a new movie out actually called Shaolin, which was, came out in 2011. Really good flick. And if you look in the middle of their temple, they have a giant Indian sitting lotus style with the heart chakra symbol, which many of you might think looks like the swastika. That's where Hitler got the ideas from, was he saw that symbol and he liked it. <coughs> is there's a heart chakra symbol, which is a bent armed forearm cross, and it's supposed to be showing that it's spinning and it's rotating equal forms. But anyway, I can get into that later. The point being is there is an Indian sitting here in this Chinese Shaolin temple because they honor where their stuff came from. But the Shaolin don't claim that they're Hindu. They don't say, well, Shaolin's, you know, 4,000 years old because their teachings come from Hinduism and that they've interpreted it and created their own religion off of interpretations from other people. No, the Shaolin say we're Shaolin. We just are. They, they, they don't worry about time and where it came from and blah, 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 blah. And, and they'll tell you what I'm telling you now. 1,500 years ago, you know, we had, you know, Daum will come over and help us out. And even a little bit before that, when the emperor, you know, said, hey, Buddhism's kind of neat, I'm going to build you a new temple, which is where Shaolin gets its name from. I've got a podcast on Shaolin, and I can go into more of them later. But my point is that with Wicca, for someone to say, well, it's based off of old teachings, well, that doesn't make it old teachings. You know, if you have this... Uh, druid come up and they teach you and you take and create your own new thing but base it off of druid teachings that doesn't make you a druid just because you're influenced by druid teachings you know back in the olden days a lot of this stuff that wicca not all wiccans okay i know a lot of really cool wiccans a lot of these wiccans they'll they'll, they'll take this stuff that's old and they'll say that's wiccan and this is wiccan and that's wiccan you know you know those are you know like the futhark runes you know, Wiccans will say, like, I believe they're commonly called the witches' runes. The, the Futhark runes are from the Norse. You know, Iceland, Greenland, uh, the Viking raiders, those people, the Norse people, those are Norse runes. Odin, Allfather, hung himself from a Ysidril, the world tree, and got the inspiration to write out the runes. They are Nordic runes. That has nothing to do with the area that Wicca supposedly came from, or even witches. You know, that, that's Nordic. And then tarot. Tarot, I mean, that, that was not started over in the regions of where, you know, England and Wales and, you know, the area where, once again, Wicca and witchcraft is supposed to come from. Then there, you know, there's other stuff too. Meditation. Meditation comes from India. You know, yes, the Chinese and the Japanese do meditation. They learned it from the Indians. And at the same time, yeah, there was techniques and practices that the druids and the witches and stuff that they had that is very similar to meditation. But they've adapted new stuff. All of these things are made up. Even the original meditation, it was someone made meditation by discovering it. You know, these religions, these these names for the deities, they discovered them, they named them names in their own words and languages. It's made up. Everything, the entire world that you live in and sit in is made up. The computer is made up. The phone is made up. The shirt was made up. Superman was made up. Everything is made up. You are making it as you go. You are learning and you're interpreting. The thing is, it does not invalidate nor take away from anything, no matter how old it is. Take Wicca for an example. It is very, it's very good. Lately, it, it almost doesn't exist. Because you'll have your traditional Wiccans who, you know, go by the old Gardanian witchcraft or Alexander Sanders for Alexandrian witchcraft. Uh, Wicca, uh, Alexander, I believe he was a witch, and he created his own form of Wicca, which is where you get Alexandrian Wiccan. And they'll have their own version of it, and yeah, sure, 50, 60 years old. That doesn't make it any less effective, doesn't make it any less important, doesn't make it any less sacred. Take the Shaolin, 1,500 years. Just because they're only 1,500 years old versus Hinduism, 4,000 years old, does not make it any less, does not take away from it. Age does not determine quantity or potency. You know, some things rot with age. It is good to change. You know, look at the earth. The earth will erode and, and new channels for water will flow. Things will change on the surface of the earth constantly throughout the years. It is in a constant state of change. This is natural. This is good. You know, look at me. 
I don't sit here and claim one specific title. I'm never going to. There is so much out there. Back in the olden days, you're stuck to one area. Of course, that's the only religion you had. That's, that's, that's what you were. I'm not. I've got the internet. I've got people to talk to. I've got books to read. I've got self-searching to do. I'm not going to limit myself to one thing. I'm going to keep looking, exploring, and researching and taking in these different principles. There's nothing wrong with that. My religion is, I, I think once before I've called it the one second religion, because every second is changing. Or maybe I call it the one minute religion. Regardless, every day, my faith and understanding in the divine changes and alters a little bit. It's constantly changing and shifting. You want to know how old my spirituality is? Technically, uh, 1994 is when I started looking into different faiths, but even when I was younger, I was still raised in a religion, so technically, as of today, you couldn't say my faith is more than 30 years old. Yeah, I, I'm telling you about principles and philosophies from Shaolin from 1,500 years ago, I'm telling you about Hinduism from 4,000 years ago. And yes, I incorporate a bit of everything. I incorporate, you know, a bit of teachings from each of the religions that I do. If it makes sense, I add it. I don't claim that my spirituality and my path is 4,000 years old because it's not. I haven't been walking it that long. If anything, it's actually a little younger for me because, like I said, I've been walking it since 1994, so maybe 17 years. Maybe that would be the most accurate thing to say my personal path is 17 years old and it keeps changing and it keeps evolving and it will. So what's my point in all this? Don't get so caught up of how old something is. Don't get so caught up on, well, that's 4,000 years old. So many people say, oh, this person's published and they're great. You know, you, you'll, you'll see these writers and you'll just be awe inspired. They are normal people just like you and me. They are just normal people who discovered something or researched something and are sharing it with you. Same thing goes for any of the original teachers. Siddhartha, the first Buddha, you know, Dalmo, you know, these, these great teachers, Jesus of Nazareth. You have these wonderful spiritual teachers, the Dalai Lama. I mean, I'm sure names will keep popping into my head as I think, you know. The point is, these individuals, there's nothing special about them. They're just like you and me. They discover something by looking within. So never ever, in my opinion, and in my views, which I like to say a lot because it's the truth, never ever limit yourself. Don't say well, this person does this, so if, if, if they didn't do it, or if I can't learn from someone else, I'm not going to do it. Find it within yourself. Go sit out in the woods and listen to nature. Truly understand the world around you. Research it, experiment, live, invent, create. All it was, you know, a couple of people sitting around in a corner and saying, hey, you know, this kind of makes sense. And it turned into this huge religion that people talk about thousands of years later. That's what it comes down to. Go discover create and invent your own religion, your own path. And once again, you don't need a name. If you are not technically being trained in or brought up in or whatever the case may be in a particular path or religion, what's the point in claiming a name? I mean, you know, me and my wife, yeah, she actually has a name that she mostly follows, but she mixes and mashes too. So, let me give you an example. Why would I want to sit here and call myself, uh, let's say, I'm just going to pick one at random. Why would I want to sit here and say that I'm a druid? And that's the path I follow. Even though I incorporate, let's say, principles from Wicca, or principles from Hinduism or Christianity. If I'm going to, in, you know, mesh in other interpretations, or, you know, why would I want to sit here and say, well, I'm Taoist, if I'm going to include some Buddhism, you know, or, or Judaism in there. You know, if I'm going to include other things, I'm no longer that one thing. Now I've branched out and become myself, which is good. It's kind of like mixed martial arts, you know. Well, what style do you fight in? I fight in the style of me, or the style of kick-ass. You know, the point is, you know, you're taking and making it your own. One of the greatest, in my opinion, once again, uh, modern martial arts practitioners would be Bruce Lee. Everyone's heard of him, you know. Birth name Siphon, for those of you interested. I can go into a long story about that, too. But, you know, Bruce Lee didn't teach people to fight like him. He taught them to fight like themselves. If you're big, use that to your advantage. If you're fast, use that to your advantage. Each person's going to throw their punch differently. You know, a little bit of how the twist. You get the basic idea, and then you throw it your own way. Bruce Lee was very big on, you know, let's not stick with one style. 
there is no style in martial arts. There is only martial arts. There is only myself. I am not karate. I am not taekwondo. I am not Chinese boxing. I am not, you know, any of these things. I am me. And it's my way of self-expressing an art. And I feel the same philosophies and principles can be applied to spirituality. I'm not defined by the one spiritual path. I'm defined by all the spiritual paths that I do and the way that I make them my own. So I encourage you to do the same. You don't have to. Like I said, I'm just one person. Uh, I believe Dalma, one of, one of my favorite sayings from him is, you know, don't listen to me. I could be the world's biggest liar. Find the answer for yourself. Look within. You are intelligent. You are smart. Learn and make your own decision, your own mind up. Don't take other people's words for it. Don't take my word for it. Don't take anyone's word for it. Make it your own. Live, discover, learn. Yes, holding up the phone is causing me to shift constantly because, yeah, this video has been going on for a while and it's going to go on for a little bit longer. So my entire point behind this video was just everything's made up. Make up your own. You know, you're, you're, you're in the kitchen, so to speak. Create your own recipe. You don't follow the cookbook. There's so many cookbooks out there. You don't know what you like until you discover it. You're going to like things a little bit different than someone else. So, now, oh, that's right. That's right. I, my, my, I was talking about the fact that, you know, if you don't technically have training in one path, why claim that title? So, you pick up a book on Wicca. I'm going to say Wicca again because a lot of people are calling themselves Wiccan. And they don't know what Wicca is. They don't. They don't. They didn't learn it from anywhere. They they grabbed a book. They read a book, and they said, "Oh, this makes sense. I want to be Wiccan." And that's why today a lot of Wicca and Wiccans are pretty much just whatever they want to call themselves. And there's a lot of misunderstanding and interpretations with it. People are looking for something, and that's the closest thing to what they can find. And that's why I've got my abandoned Wicca video, and I talk about you know Asatru and you know Druids and you know Taoists and all these different you know faiths and practices and there's other things to look into is my point. And you don't have to stop just because you find one. If you go and you join a coven and you go up through the ranks, uh, I know this uh, as one individual who's actually here on YouTube as well, and he is actually, I uh, forget what his rank is, but he has actually climbed the ranks in Wicca in a, an exact tradition. He has a teacher. He is in a coven. He is learning rank by rank and you know exploring this. He is a Wiccan. Actually, he's a high priest, too. But he is actually a Wiccan. He's following this path. He didn't just randomly grab a book and interpret some of the you know possibilities. Uh, let me give you another example. I, I know some people who are Druids. They are part of a Druid order, following Druidic teachings, going through the ranks, Bard, Ove, Druid, and actually learning, you know, and, and you know, th th they are Druid. That, that's what they're doing. That's their path. You know, I know some people who are Shaolin. You know, these Shaolin monks, priests, or just martial artists, which some of them, they are literally taking and climbing through the different paths of Shaolin. They are following that path. They are learning from those teachers that have learned from other teachers who have learned from other teachers, and they can trace their origin back. They can trace back the history. And... Sorry, phone call. Ha. So, they are tracing their history back to however long for their particular tradition, back to whatever source that is directly lined down to them so they have this history, so they're claiming that title because they're being taught in that. You know, it's like saying, well, I'm a police officer. Did you go to police academy school? No, I read about it, law enforcement online. I know the laws, so I'm a police officer. Or I'm a ninja. Did you learn from a ninja? No. Saw it on TV. Took a karate class. I'm a ninja. Now, this might be pissing some of you off, but I'm being serious. That's about how silly it is. Grabbing a book, reading a few principles, and just claiming it. What are you claiming? You're claiming that you can read a book? Anybody can do that. It's different to go through training for something. So if you don't have formal training in it, once again, it doesn't take away from who you are or what you can do. I've known people who are self-taught, who are by far mo more potent and knowledgeable than other people that I've met who have been trained. It's about what you get out of it and what you put into it that's more important. Now me, I've been self-taught for... Let's see, when did I actually start learning from someone? Three years ago. 
So I was 27. See how I count? It's so about 15 years I was self-taught. Didn't have any official teachers. Well, I guess originally before that I had CCD teachers because I was raised Roman Catholic. Uh, didn't 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 sit well with me. I'm not bashing Roman Catholicism. It's just not for me. So yeah, Fif you know. 17 years ago, started doing some self-research and self-exploration, reading books, talking to people, researching on my own, self-taught. Any spirituality, magic, mysticism that I did, all through self-exploration, self-discovery, practicing on my own, reading it here, reading it there, never claimed a title, never needed to because I wasn't anything, I was just me. Well, three years ago, I started actually, I found a teacher, someone who I call a master, who has been helping me, but that's not the only path I follow, so I don't claim that title. Then, about a year ago, I also started this other distant training course, which, you know, has different levels and, and grading, and I actually have to pass the test to get to the next level, and I don't claim that title either. Um, I had another teacher that I went to see and I took a seminar with, and I think there's a couple other seminars I've done in between. You know, there's even one for uh, Quantum Touch that I've done, and, you know, I've done different types of etheric touch and... and Theta Healing and Reiki and things like that. So I've done all these different healing arts, which were little seminars. Yeah, sometimes I do claim the title of healer because I've gone through these classes to be a healer. However, I'm not just a healer, so I don't just claim one path, one title. So all this long-winded explanation and all this long-winded talking is, my point is you don't need to follow one path. You don't need to limit yourself. And there's so many resources. Operation for you. has been completed. Operation has been completed. So at that note, that's actually towards the end of my video. That's a good spot to stop because that was pretty freaking funny. So this is Blazely Dragon, wishing you the most fruitful experience that you could find in spirituality, and hoping that you have the wisdom to see within and see beyond the preconceived notions of society. Blessings and have a good day.